Coach, what was the play that you called at the timeout with 43 seconds left, and what happened that they did to kind of disrupt the play? Well, I mean, we, we called a play that gave us an option to um, attack the basket or um, two looks at, well, two looks to attack the basket and two looks to um, on on both sides to get a three, and so. Um, Felt like we, uh, they, you know, you have to compliment them. They defended it uh, really well, and we just, we just didn't get a clean look off of that shot. Some of the guys uh, that we just talked to were said that they're sad, disappointed. Uh, so they have to win the whole tournament, the ACC tournament, next week to get in. What is your process with them the next couple of days and communicating them to have the mindset of? one game as opposed to four? Well, I don't know where they get that information. I think they see it with what's going with the narrative about what they have to do to get into the tournament. It's TV and wherever. Basically, they're saying that they feel like they have to win four next week to get in. So the, the question is, what is your communication with them the next couple of days so they don't go in thinking that they have that massive task and it's just got to get the first one before you get the second one? Again, I'm not a narrative guy. <laughs> All I know is that um, on, on Wednesday at 7, we play the winner of Boston College in Louisville. And so um, our full attention is on that game at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Hubert, did you, did you feel like tonight sort of had some of the same similarities as the game over in Durham in terms of how difficult it was to score, especially <coughs> on the stretch? No, I, you know what I felt like? I felt like it was uh, uh, very similar to a number of our games. That's what I feel like. You know, when we... Uh, in the second half, took the uh, four-point lead. Yeah. I think it's been a consistent theme all year where in that time where it's a great opportunity to extend it, um, there's been a lot of times this year that we haven't been able to do it. And so, you know, we take the four-point lead and we give Mark Mitchell a drive to his left for a layup. And then I think the next possession, we give a lob to Lively, who rolls every right. time off of a ball screen. <coughs> and so I wouldn't say it was consistent with the first two game over in Durham. I would say it's probably more consistent with the close losses that we've that we've suffered this year. How frustrating is that one tendency to you? That Very frustrating. It really is. At the end of the day, it comes down to making plays. And you know, I've talked to you guys all year and to the team about the importance of discipline and details. And that's a perfect example of discipline and details from a defensive standpoint. You know, I, you know, those are things that have been told and taught, and those are the type of things that you just can't do down the stretch. And so it is very frustrating. Hubert, what would you say has kind of led to that disconnect between? You know, I wouldn't call it a disconnect. That, that's, that would be your definition or your, you know, decision on words, but I wouldn't call it a disconnect. How would you define it? That that they're not receiving exactly, or they're not executing the the details that you guys are are coaching them. Well, there are mistakes always made out there on the floor. Um, We just happen to make those two mistakes at that particular time. So I think there's a, a huge difference between a mistake and a disconnect. I don't know what a 
a disconnect means. A couple weeks ago, you mentioned that you felt as though there was a mental block between practice and game time when it comes to that execution. Do you still feel that way, or mm -hmm. I've never said that. I've never said that there was a mental block. Between or that's how it, that's how the players described there was a mental block. I wasn't around when the players said that, so I don't want to reference anything that I wasn't there for in terms of um, understanding, you know, their words and the context in which they used it. Um, I just know that, and for this game, you know, we just didn't make enough plays to be able to win. Coach, there in the second half, uh, there's a, a wing three. We kind of hesitated, took a dribble, then stepped back from the shooting hit. The P also had the air ball three at the top of the key. Did you, since maybe, you know, after those guys maybe found their stride from three point land the past two games, that they kind of were second guessing themselves tonight with the magnitude of how important this game was? Mm, I don't know about that. I, I just know, you know, I thought, I, I, I thought we had wide open looks from three that we didn't make. But more importantly, I thought we had layups that we missed. We missed a lot of shots around the basket. I mean, in, the first half, Pete missed a layup. Caleb missed a dunk, and we only got one point from it. Armando missed layup. You know, I just felt like we we had opportunities around the rim to be able to convert, and we just weren't able to do it. And you you know, obviously, there's been struggles in three point line pretty much the whole season. Was this the first time maybe that you felt like you guys were struggling to finish those skinny buckets tonight throughout the season? I wouldn't say that. I don't. I, I just feel, you know, in regards to this game, I, I felt like we didn't finish well around the basket. Even when Derek Lively was out of the game, I didn't feel like we finished well around the basket. You, were, you, you, talked, about, like, you talked about the guys playing with a, a weight, I think, a couple times this year, like at practice, carrying that weight around. Did you sense that at all tonight, or do you think the I last didn't. couple of games that they kind of maybe worked through that? No, I didn't. I, I didn't. I, you know, I've said at times this year, um, but I haven't felt that lately. I didn't feel that today. Um, I felt really good about today. I really felt good about the way that we were practicing and playing the last couple of weeks. And um, I didn't feel at all that there was a weight on them um, in regards to playing here tonight. Hebert, you said that it was an emphasis during the year to widen the rotation that especially in tournaments like the conference tournament where you have to play back to back to back. You've kind of had fatigue issues last year. How do you feel about your depth going into Greensboro where it would require you to win on four consecutive days to win that tournament? Yeah, again, I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't, I'm not adopt, adopting the narrative that we have to win four <coughs> games. And so um, my focus is on Wednesday. Um, um, and I think it's important to focus on what is real and, and, and what is ahead of us as a game at 7 o'clock on Thursday. Um, that's where my focus is. Taking the NCAA element out of it, though, do you feel good about your depth or better about your depth this year than you did a year ago? I feel good about our team. I told them in the locker room that even though that I was um, – very sad that I wasn't done um, at all in terms of my confidence and what kind of team that this can become. And my confidence in, in, in this team is not going to waver at all. And so I told him, even though that I was sad about the outcome of this game, that the confidence that I have in these guys and in this team um, hasn't wavered a bit heading into the ACC tournament. Take two more. Hubert, you guys were down by, I think, one was just under a minute left, and then Roach was able to get that up and under land to put them up three. What did you see happen there defensively in terms of you guys had stopped the drive pretty well for most of the game? Yeah, we did. Um, we had two guys in the lane. So we had guys right there in front of the basket. And again, you know, that's, that's where, it, you know, it comes down to that, you know, you have to make a play. We, we were there, and Roach made a really good move to get around the defenders and be able to score. And, you know, we had a one-point lead, and I think Filipowski got fouled. 
hit to two free throws. So, you know, one of the things that he does really <laughs> well is draw fouls, and then he's really good at getting offensive rebounds <coughs> off of his own shot. And so put on a free throw line, and then so it's, it's, it's again, you just you got to make plays. And they made a couple more towards the end of the game that allowed them to win. One more if there is one. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you.